Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Rotano. I'm standing in for Brian Lamore, who is out assisting people with the fires going on mm -hmm. around our state. So uh, a few prayers and blessings out to those people that are helping take care of the safety and the fires around the state. Today we have a lovely guest with us, George McCulley. We go way back, <laughs> known each other for a little while, yeah. and I'm so glad to see you. Nice and to see you, Mary. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. thank you. Thank you. So uh, we have lots to catch up on. Yes, so, we do. Uh, let's get started. <laughs> let's get started on this. Yes. Uh, for those of people that have not met you or mm -hmm. know of your uh, work or anything, how about you just tell us a little bit about who you are, how you shaped your educational life for the arts, and uh, take it away. I'll try to do that in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And I'm trying to figure that out as well, who I am, you know. Who you are. We all yeah. seem to do that. Yeah, that's a lifelong pursuit for anybody, artist or not. Exactly, yeah. Well, I, I moved to, I'm from Georgia. I moved to Montana in 93. Oh, very good. And I've been a potter for, I don't know, 45 years, almost 46 years. And uh, I went to the University of South Carolina as an undergraduate student got an, a BFA in ceramics, then I did a lot of things, and I went to graduate school at the University of Georgia in 1976, Very good. got an MFA in ceramics, and then made pots. Uh, I've done all kinds of other kinds of jobs in addition to making pots. Um, then I moved here and uh, have been, uh, I live or, or near the capital, I have a studio behind my house. So like other potters in Helena, I make pots and do workshops, do some teaching, and, um, and sell work. Mm. I love to sell that work. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's the bread and butter right yeah, there. Yeah. And some of that work can be viewed out on your website. Um, Thank you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. 21st Century is lovely. It provides us a great way to have instant <laughs> access to, yeah. to yeah. Uh, some of your work. I'm learning that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that's an art in itself. I've been working on that myself. Mm -hmm. uh, Websites are a little tough to set up, but you have a lovely we, one out there. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's, I, I have Eric Van Imeren to thank of that, another great potter in this town. Oh, very good. He did that. I have no uh, skills at that whatsoever. Very good, yeah. very good. So um, tell us a little bit about your present projects that you've got going on. Um. Well, I just uh, returned from two and a half months in Japan where I had uh, two exhibitions, and I, I went to Japan and worked in the studio of a friend of mine, Fuminori Doguchi, and, uh, who has a studio that's on the top of a mountain in an orange grove overlooking the Ariaki Bay. It's just, when you think about a Japanese potter, that's the studio you think about. Mm -hmm. So I worked there, and we decided to have, I was supposed to have an exhibition uh, I mean, which I did, but th because the space was so big, we decided just to have a dual exhibition. Okay. Or in Japanese, it's called the hutari. Hutari. A, 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 excellent mm. to, uh, for both of us. And then uh, after that, we, had an, we got invited to have another exhibition, which was not planned. And that one actually is still going on. Very good, very good. So when you when you say exhibition, are we talking big pots, little pots, or what kind of things would be in an exhibition you know, they, because they know my work, they had asked me, you know, if I would make some big sculptural pieces. Oh, and, nice. you know, that's, it, it didn't fit into the time frame, mm -hmm. but I did make a couple of big pieces of sculpture. Uh, but typically what I made was, you know, plates and cups and bowls and jars. And mm -hmm. in Japan, the, you know, flower arranging is very important. So I made uh it's called the kabin or a kaki. It's a flower vase. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of work for the Japanese tea ceremony. So okay. those would be certain shapes of tea bowls, and they're called machawan. So I made really functional pots with some sculpture thrown in, but not the, typically I make a lot of sculpture, but that wasn't what that show, the exhibition was about. It was more about functional pieces. Mm, yes. People, pieces that people could use in their home. Exactly. And for certain oriental rituals. That's important in Japan. Yeah, I would and, and when people would come visit the studio, they would say, they would see me making something, and the first question is, you know, what is that for? Because, like, for instance, bowls, they have different uses for different shapes of bowls, which we don't really have in our culture. No, bowl's a bowl's yeah. a bowl's a bowl. You yeah, know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So, for example, if, if you have, like, what would be an example of a bowl being used for different things? I well, mean, you, you think about the, uh, we have a salad bowl, right, just correct. in our house, mm -hmm. you know, and that bowl could be for soup, Right. it could be for salad, it could be for peanuts, but there are certain specific shapes, like for the tea ceremony, it's kind of difficult without right. an object, sure, sure. but um, it, it has to be a certain shape and have a front and a back. It has to be a certain height, and the foot has to be a certain distance off the table so that you can get your hands under it comfortably mm. and put it to yeah. your mouth. So there are specific kind of shapes and right. not really dimensions, but sort of rough dimensions about things that are used for certain purposes. And these these customs probably go back hundreds of years. Their culture is fifteen thousand years old. Thousands of years, yeah. then, yeah. yeah. So it means a lot to them to have mm. the specific shapes exactly. and sizes and and whatnot. So uh, when you were in Japan, I, I've never traveled uh, that far out of the country. Mm -hmm. I've been to Canada and Mexico. Can you tell us just maybe some things that you learned about the culture while being mm -hmm. there? Because it sounds like you were there for a while, right? Yeah, I was there for two and a half months. You know, I often get asked to do things in other countries. Sometimes it's an exhibition, sometimes mm -hmm. it's teaching. And what I try to do is not be a tourist. I mean, I okay. just, I, I don't like to be in that position. So for instance, I mean, I lived in, a, in an apartment building, which is typical. Mm -hmm. I lived in an old part of Kumamoto, <clears throat> and, uh, which is our sister state. I mean, Kumamoto, the prefecture, is our sister state, and uh, so the city is Kumamoto Shi. That's the city in the prefecture of Kumamoto. Mm. So I lived in an old part of town, and I became part of my neighborhood. And I would uh, typically what I would do is ride my bicycle to my friend Fuminori San's house. We would then drive up the mountain to his studio, end of the day, go home, get my bicycle go to the same little marketplace. Mm -hmm. They knew me. Right. You know, we talked. We I bought fresh vegetables, always fresh, because it's an agricultural area. Yeah. And then go cook and maybe then go to some friends and have some drinks or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe go eat something. Yeah. Um, but I just became part of the neighborhood. And I think that's really the way to be. And my acceptance was, was just phenomenal there. Well, know? I'll bet. And I, I would imagine it also has to... Um, improve the connection you have with the people when it comes to creating pottery that they're using in their life, that you're part of their life throughout the time that you're there. Mm -hmm. What would be, you know, uh, I, I can't even imagine since I haven't traveled, is there something about the culture that really touches your heart that, that you know, you really, really like, you would like to share? You know, if you could send somebody over there, what would you like them to to see your experience being there. Well, you know, that's a great, that's a really good question. And I will make my, try to make, I mean, to me, that's a really long answer. Yes. I keep touching that. Right. Yeah, it's a really that. long answer. I'll try to make it brief. You know, I've always been drawn to the Asian culture and philosophy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not my background. I mean, I'm a, uh, I was raised in a Greek, in a Greek family, in a Greek mm -hmm. community. So that's far removed from Japanese culture. Yes. But because they are philosophical, mm -hmm. they're aesthetic, right. they have tradition, and they are, I said this many times in Japan, I think of Japan like this, it's just, there are no words, it's this, you know. It's to be unto themselves because of, you know, Buddhism. Right. So that's always drawn me, and I found that despite the fact that everybody wants to be like America, there is still that it's called wabi-sabi in Japan. There's no definition. Mm. Wabi-sabi is about how you live, how you work, how you talk, how you carry yourself, how you handle situations, um, how you describe things. There is no real definition, mm. but they have that. They don't think about it because it's part of their being. And so I've just been drawn to their, their way of being. Yeah. It sounds like the culture itself has really incorporated the art of being it, in exactly. everything that it does. And this inspires your work, no doubt. You know, my work is inspired by a lot of 
things, a lot mm-hmm. of places, but certainly Asia has really captured my work quite a bit. Not so much my sculptural work, but my pots. Because I, I handle the clay very casually. After many years of working, it's become quite goofy, actually. <laughs> and um, that work is really sort of like the Momoyama period, which was 400 years ago. And in Japan, they really recognized my work to be that kind of style. Mm. And it's not something that I do consciously. No. It's just that I look at things very casually in terms of my work. So although I pay attention, sometimes I think like if my work is next to some really pretty work, mm-hmm. my work looks like you know somebody's learning. You know, <laughs> and I like that part about it. Yeah, there's a freshness to your work. Yeah. I, and when I, I look, think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so, too. That Thank you. That would be uh, one of the words I would use to describe it. And you get out to your website and take a look at what's available out there. Your work has a very fresh look to it. Thank you, Mary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If somebody was interested in purchasing a piece, could they do it online? Or is there contact information online so they could get a hold of you to do that? Well, you know, I have the, my website, and I don't have a sales gallery on my website, mm-hmm. but all my contact information is there. I'm in the phone book. So wow, that's anytime, rare. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> they can call I you know, on a yeah. landline. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I still have that old thing, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. Very good. Yes, it's. I yeah. I'm just touched that you're here today. Uh, any upcoming projects? You were raising awareness about. Um, it sounds like through your pottery, the Japanese culture. Do you mm-hmm. have anything upcoming that you'd like to raise awareness about? I do, but can, can I just tell? Um, you asked me about how I felt about going there in the culture. Yeah. There's one little brief, do we have a little brief Oh, story? absolutely, okay. we have time, sure. So I, it seems like in my life, no matter what country I go to, I always end up making friends with people that have like the Golden Pantry or the 7-Eleven. <laughs> I, I have no idea why that happens. Once again, <laughs> near my apartment, there's a Coco convenience store, uh-huh. like 7-Eleven. Sure. I go in there and uh, because it's on the way to this coffee shop I would go to. And I befriended the manager. His name is Soijima. And we became friends. So, you know, like after about a month, I'd gone to have some acupuncture. Mm. And this person that took me dropped me off at my apartment. She drove off. I didn't have my key to my door. So I said, well, you know, I have friends. So I walked down to the Coco um, convenience store. So Ijima was walking towards my house because he hadn't seen me in two days. He wondered what the heck was going on. Why hasn't he seen me? So we get on his cell phone, called Michael-san. So this whole thing unfolded. He said, well, come back to the store. You know, you want some food? You want to have a beer? He said, you know, I'll take you wherever you need to go. So it was this kind of thing that I became part of the neighborhood. And that kind of experience, you know, you, you can't, if you're a tourist, and like you spend your time in museums, you never have those kind of experiences. Mm-hmm. Every place I go, those kind of things happen. Wow, like I'm so lucky. No. That just yeah. gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Because it, it's, yeah. it's really connecting, you know, to the community of people there. And um, people are just people are just people. They want to live. They want to share. They, exactly. They're, they're concerned about others' well-beings. And it, it's, it sounds like that you really touched into just being part of the community. Well, you have to mesh yourself. Mesh, yes, with exactly. definitely, yeah. definitely. And especially if you're going to do something so precious to them as to create pieces that are involved right. in their mm-hmm. their um, cultural uh, rituals, for sure. Well, I mean, but thanks for that. letting me tell that little story. So now I'll answer your question. <laughs> um, you know, I much of what I do is not based in Helena. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have two sales a year at my studio. But most of my work in, in the things I do are uh, out of Montana. Yeah. In um, October, I, I've been invited to be a visiting artist up at the Red Lodge Clay Center. So David Hiltner is the owner. And I said, well, I have a great idea. Why don't we bring Fuminori, my potter friend in Japan, why don't we bring him to the Red Lodge Clay Center? So that's going to work out great. So he's coming in October. We'll both work there for a month. And then I'm bringing Fuminori to Helena, and he's been to Montana four times. Oh, he has. And Wonderful. He, yeah, and he knows people in Whitefish and Missoula. He loves Montana. So I've, I've arranged a bunch of workshops for him while he's in Montana. And one of them we will, he will do at the Clay Arts Guild at, out at the airport. 
Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. What a treat to have such... It's going to be a hoot. Yeah, yeah. to yeah. have him here. And then uh, are you going to do any exhibitions while he's here? You know, I think that we, he and I will not have an exhibition. Um, I don't know what will happen to that work, mm -hmm. but um, I've actually tried to find... I'm working on to see if I can get a venue for him to have maybe a couple days exhibition. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that goes. You know, typically exhibitions in a gallery that's two years in advance. Wow. But I'm still looking for something. You sure, know. why not? Just put it out there. And then, you know, after <clears throat> that, I have a project. I was actually interviewed on this program a couple years ago with my buddy Archie Bray Jr. because I'd made a film about him. So I'm now making a film about one of my oldest friends, probably the most important ceramic artist in the country, Ron Myers, who lives in Athens, Georgia, retired from the University of Georgia, I think, in 2000. He'll be 79 in November and busier than any potter that I've ever known. Inspiring. He's absolutely. Inspiring. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm looking forward to finishing that film on him, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I can't tell you how tickled I am that you've been here today. Well, thank you. And thank you very just much. Just the treasure of, uh, of sharing about your trip to Japan and um, the importance of pottery in that culture. And, you know, I always like learning about what other artists do mm -hmm. because it's, it's nice hearing their stories on why they do what they do. And I can see that you're really passionate about um, your work. And, well, thank you. Um, yeah. And I know you're the same about yours. Yes, I am. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, yes, thank you very much for joining well, thank us Thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Thank you for being okay. here. And thank you all out there for joining us and <clears throat> taking a look at another Helena artist. And uh, get out there and discover the rest of the art that's in Helena. We had a lovely visitors here today from the Helena Arts Community Committee. So just enjoy. Have a great day. This is me.